Okay, I'm starting from glucose. All right. So I'm not telling you where the glucose comes from. Glucose from comes from nutrition. It doesn't have to be glucose. It can be proteins. It can be amino acids. <coughs> it can be fat. But everything comes eventually and connects with this pathway. Okay. So here's what we have. We have glucose, and that glucose has a high level of energy. That high level of energy will be dissected. Energy will be extracted a little bit at a time. Not a lot. We don't want an explosion. We want to extract this energy a little bit at a time so that at the end, we can create a huge amount of energy by synthesizing ATP. Okay? So, glucose will be degraded through glycolysis. Glycolysis. It'll be degraded into a molecule that is called pyruvate. And pyruvate, almost all, almost everything you eat, gets converted into pyruvate. So that's a pretty important molecule right there. But pyruvate in itself is not very useful. Pyruvate will be useful when it gets converted into something called acetyl coenzyme A. And the reason why it is useful is because it gets inside something called the mitochondria. That's we, what we have here. And the mitochondria has this particular shape where you see the inner membrane that's folded like this to make sure that there is a lot of surface so that a lot of reactions can happen. Once the molecule, pyruvate, gets converted into acetyl coenzyme A, it will enter a series of reactions that will combine this molecule that has, by the way, two carbon, three carbons here, six carbons there. So of course, from six carbons to glycolysis, we produce two times three carbons. And then here, there is a carbon dioxide that gets liberated. So we end up with, with two carbons. This molecule, acetyl coenzyme A, is going to enter the cycle, which is called the citric acid cycle. And produce different molecules that go round and round and round. And the last molecule here, to accept this, they will merge together, is a four carbon molecule. So four carbon molecule plus two carbons equals right here a metabolite, a molecule that has six carbons. These carbons will be extracted somewhere in this cycle into carbon dioxide, which is a waste for us. We breathe it out. We exhale carbon dioxide. That's where it's coming from. Okay? And then, because we move, we remove some carbons, and then we end up with four carbons molecules, electrons are lost. Well, actually, they're not lost. Electrons will be converted into another form, a biochemical form, and they'll be given to electron acceptors. And those electron acceptors are NAD plus and also FAD. That will become NADH and FADH2. And actually, it's NADH plus H plus there. Okay? So we have these molecules being created. And these ones here are absolute key to what's going to happen after. We are in the mitochondria, and we are somewhere called the matrix. So all of these reactions here happen in the matrix of the mitochondria, which is on the inside. So if I could draw a mitochondria right here, it looks like that. That's the matrix right here. 
the outer membrane, the inner membrane, the intermembrane space right there, right here, and then the matrix right inside there. Okay? So where we are now, we went through the glycolysis, we got inside the mitochondria. Once inside the mitochondria, we access this Krebs <coughs> cycle. The Krebs cycle goes round and round, accepts the acetylcoenzyme A, creates six carbon molecules that release carbon dioxide. By releasing carbon dioxide, electrons are liberated that are, and then they're captured by electron um, <coughs> catching molecules, if I can say that. Okay? Electron acceptors. So, um, we are still in the matrix. So, we have our membranes like that, and we are in the matrix. The space, inner membrane, outer membrane. In and out, and matrix right here. We have Na. DH right there, and we're going to follow the path of NADH for now. NADH will be captured by some pro proteins that are situated on the inside of the membrane. Okay, so we have the inner membrane right there, and we have proteins that are part of this membrane. They're called integral proteins. And they have different, there's different complexes. There's the complex one, there's complex three. There's complex four, and we'll see complex two a little bit later. The electrons that are here will be accepted by complex number one because complex number one has a site that can bind NADH. Okay? It's like the lock and key thing, where we have a substrate and we have an enzyme that has a site called an active site that can accept electrons. You're going to run the batteries pretty quick. Your Am camera. I gonna, gonna <laughs> no, I mean the there, camera. There will be no more energy? <laughs> Are you, that's what you're saying? You're running out of ATP. I, is it, no, is uh, it blinking? It's, it's pretty red. Yeah. It's red, OK. Let's see where we go. OK. okay? <laughs> Let's see where we go. So. We have the electrons here that are accepted by complex number one. And as they are accepted by complex number one, magic happens. The complex here opens up and lets protons that are on the inside and let them out. Right? So protons are being pumped out. And the electron is now going to flow from one to three to four. And every time, every time the electron binds to these proteins, a proton will be pumped out, which means that that's going to create a proton gradient. I'll have a pH that's going to be lower on this in this portion here, and it's going to be higher here because protons there's less there's less number here than there are there. Okay, so the number is different, the concentration is different. So that creates a gradient. And by the way, I said that I would talk about FADH2. Even though I'm running out of batteries, I'm going to do this. FADH2 is not accepted by complex 1. It's accepted by complex 2. So for every electrons that are found in FADH2, two protons will be pumped out, while NADH will pump three protons. This is just numbers there. Now, what's going to happen here is very important because there is a protein that is very, very, very important. And that protein is a bit like this. And it's called ATP synthase. And that ATP synthase is going to take advantage. Are we still okay? Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, you got lots of time. I do. No, no, I'm just joking. It's dead. It's it's. It, I don't know. I mean, you should look <laughs> at it, but it's All right. rare. Uh, I'm gonna keep going. So it takes it takes advantage of this gradient. Okay. So what we have here is a protein that's going to take these protons one by one, one by one, not 10 at a time, one by one, and shuttle them, shuttle them back in. But because this has a lot, high level of energy, the gradient has a lot of energy, it's going to use that energy and transfer that energy to a molecule, and it's going to join ADP 
plus phosphate and is going to create this wonderful molecule that we all love, ATP. Okay? That is respiration. That's how glucose gets used to create this molecule here. That's why we use oxygen. That's why we exhale carbon dioxide and water. All of these molecules here are linked to glycolysis and this process there. Okay? So, 